Greetings, and thank you for joining us the Worship Center on this Sunday morning. We would like to welcome you to our service. We would like to also invite you to share. Have a watch party so that your friends and family will join and watch with you. Hit the like button and a couple of hearts for us just to let us know that you're with us. So we believe that we empower people to live a life of faith and victory. So at this point, we would like to thank our bishop, Bishop White, and our pastor, Pastor Maya, for the opportunity of letting us worship with you on this morning. So again, we say thank you, put on your seatbelts, because we're getting ready to go high in the Lord. So if you will, put your hands together, because we're getting ready to go in with prayer, and from there on, we're going higher. Thank you, and God bless.
believe I am standing on holy ground that God is pleased I am doing my assignment. Listen, our pastor led us on last week and it's my assignment to follow. We are getting ready for harvest. I am not moved by what I see. Oh, good God, you dying. I thank God that I don't look like what I've been through. Bishop said it all last Sunday, I bring him a leaf and he leaving in us. And certainly because he's a covenant keeping God, he honor when we sow. As we worship, remember I said we're going to worship in spirit and in truth? Well, the truth is that God calls us to give. It's kind of hard to love somebody and not give, isn't it? But as we get ready, we the month of September, the worship center family, you know what we do every October, and God has laid it on our pastor heart. She said it on last week, and I'm going to repeat it again on today. 120 or 220. What is the spirit of the living God saying unto you? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice. Again, I don't look like what I've been through because I believe in giving. Hey, they don't go shop. I believe in giving and the principle works. Let's not forget our children. We have to treat them at a young age, twenty dollars. So listen, we don't go too many places anyway because we're still obedient and we're using wisdom. So we've been able to say we don't go to McDonald's like any place. We don't go to Coco Patrol. So you know what I'm saying? Because we have to be good steward of what God tells us to do. So as we sow, as we say personally, but we must give corporately. I know you've been faithful in your time and offering, but you also got to obey God. Whatever your realm of faith is, because you give according to your faith, because you believe the report of the Lord. And God said he's not a man that he shall lie. Listen, I don't have to keep on giving you scripture. I'm just a living witness that the principle works. So what is 120, what is 220? You prepare yourself, and you might best yourself. It's okay. Some of us are not so good with managing. But I promise, if you save twenty-seven dollars a week, something along those lines, twenty-seven fifty. Since last week, that pastor said, and you do it now. And you start, you will be ready by our holiday Sunday in October. So without any further ado, read along with me. I'm gonna encourage you. You say, well, Elder Street, how do I give? It's on the screen. You have the cash app. You may have also the Givelify app, and you find us there, the worship center, St. Louis. And we still believe in writing checks. Worried about my age, I still do it. I write checks too. Our address, you know it, is on the screen. 5869 Barbara Avenue, St. Louis, Missouri, 63112. If you still choose to mail it, don't let any member stop you from giving. Because that's the last thing the enemy will want us to do in this season, is to walk by sight. But the word tells us that we do not walk by sight, but we walk by faith. So are you ready to make this declaration? You already did what you need to do. You have the gift of fire, you have the dollar sign, the cash out of our pastor. We thank God, I don't take it for granted. For certainly this is the Lord's doing. History is being made, has been made since 2014 at the worship center. And I have been personally blessed in the person of the prophetic moment of Pastor Maya. Now, read along with me, it's important. Uh, my spiritual grandfather, William Murphy, often says this, it's only work if we all do it. So, let us read and make this declaration and believe in faith and watch God do what he has always done. Keep his word. According to the word of God, I decree that money comes to the body of Christ and money comes to me for the sake of the gospel. I am laying a foundation and God is performing his word in my life. I call my local church, this church, the worship center of St. Louis, death free. I call in all the necessary finances to completely pay for all the buildings, properties, and equipment, and to do everything God has called us as a church to do. We will tell the untold, rich, the enriched, and help believers walk in faith and victory by the anointed teaching and preaching of the gospel. That's why it's important, because it's not about us. It's about the kingdom. I call myself, I speak or leave for you debt free. I proclaim that I have the necessary finances to do everything God has called me to do with enough in store to bless others. Father, I honor you. Uh -huh, that's what we do. By putting you first in my finances and giving you my best in time and offering. I thank you that you supply all my needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus and grant the desires of my heart. Listen, Bishop told us last week, so things you've been desiring, God don't grant it. You are opening the windows of heaven and pouring me out a blessing until 
city overflows. I believe. Do you believe? Say, I believe. I receive. Double in every area of my life. Double anointing. Double rejoicing. Double in my giving. Double in my receiving. Double in my income. And double in my asset. I receive double in Jesus' name. I call my house. And all my property paid for me. I believe I receive horses and bonuses. Raises and bonuses, sales and commission, several settlement, estate and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and return, discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, cash out and paper payment, gifts and surprises, the huh? love to money found, thank you Lord, bills decrease and pay it off, it is so, blessings and increase, hallelujah, thank you Lord, let me see those hearts. Let me see the clapping of those hands. Letting me know you agree with me. That he's worthy to be thanked. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs. So that I have more than enough to give into your kingdom. Hallelujah. We thank him for every decree and every word and every statement that was made regarding our finances. It is so and so it is in Jesus name. Come on, put that in the comments. It is so and so it is in Jesus name. We're jumping right into the word. We are thankful that you decided to join us today for this worship encounter. I want you to get your Bibles and go to Hebrews 12 and 1. I have the word of the Lord concerning your life for today. And you clicked on to the right live stream. Today I'm excited because it's one day into my 38th year of living, and the word of the Lord that I have for you today is encouragement to me, and uh, and I'm excited to share it with you. It's it's one day into my birthday, but I'm gonna give this little cat a shout out because today is his birthday. Can y'all give Minister Chris a happy birthday shout out out there? Do it after the word. It's, he, he can come out Hebrews 12 and 1. This is a, this is a word. I, I mentioned him because today's his birthday, so I want him to receive this word uh, on his birthday as a word from the Lord specifically to this new year of life. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I want to talk to you today. Listen, the word of the Lord is already blessed. I want to talk to you today from the subject, I've got something to look forward to. Will you say that? I got something to look forward to. Listen, after Bishop gave us the word last week that there is life after the storm, isn't it amazing that Holy Spirit will come right back at you and let you know you got something to look forward to? I don't care what the storm looks like. I don't care what happened. I need you to prophesy over your life and say, I got something to look forward to. I don't, I don't see in the comments. I, I need to hear you. You need to let
and you need to walk away from today's encounter, say to yourself, I got to cut it loose. I need to cut it off. I got to cut it free. I, got, I, I know you still like it, but you have to lay it aside and God has given you the desire and the power to take your hands off of it and to be free. John 8 and 36 says, so if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. So I declare over you that from today forward, your behavior and your appetite and your palate will be a reflection of your newfound freedom. Let me say that again. I decree and declare over your life today that from today forward, your desires, your palate, and, your, and everything that you want will be a reflection of your newfound freedom. What you evilly been entangled in and what the devil has had you caught up in is costing you way too much. The price of staying where you were is out of the scope of your spiritual and mental capabilities and it's out of the scope of your budget and you can no longer afford to stay back there. This word is pulling you forward. You are not the only one who's going through what you're going through. And that's why church virtually is still necessary for your life because you need to be around people who have either gone through it or people who are presently going through it so that the enemy doesn't isolate you and cause you to believe that this situation is the end of you the devil is a liar it's not the end of you it's the end of the old you there's somebody new coming God's given you beauty for your ashes and you will rise again in the form of what God has created you to be. I know, I know, I know things have never been this bad. I know that you've been ha that you've never had to scrape and scrounge like you had to over the last past over the past nine months. And, but your story is not over. You do have something to look forward to. But you've got to stay focused and you've got to keep looking to Jesus. It seems like you've lost more. It seems like you lost more in the last two years than you've lost in your entire adult life. But hear the word of the Lord today. You've got to cut it loose and you've got to cut it out because you're not the only one going through it and you're not losing the fight. You're losing the weight. <laughs> Drop it in the comments. Tell yourself, cut it out. You're just losing the weight. You're not losing the fight, you're losing the way. Verse 1 tells us to run with endurance the race. Where you were was costing you way too much. And guess what? It was responsible for your lack of speed. You were supposed to be accelerating, but you couldn't accelerate because you was too heavy. Things were really slow for you because you were too heavy to move at the pace of God. You was too heavy to move at the pace that God had planned for your life. And you was too heavy to move at the pace that the, that, the, that the purpose of God for your life demands. So this isn't a question of God's faithfulness. No. This, this, where you're at right now isn't a question of God's faithfulness. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Your issue is you're still carrying stuff and you're still carrying people that make it impossible for you to run. I know, I know you love them. But they make it impossible for you to run. God told me to tell you, you need to cut it out. You need to tell Bathsheba and every one of Jezebel's messengers that they can cut it because you will no longer be tricked into walking around heavy. You will no longer be tricked into walking around slow because of what you did. Listen, you better let them know you will not recognize me after this season of separating myself. You're not gonna recognize me. It's a song that says, listen, stop what you're doing because I'm about to ruin the energy style that you're used to. You ain't gonna recognize me. Uh-uh. When I get done out of this, when, when I come out from what God has us in, my image and my style. Listen, you ought to say it over yourself. My image and my style are changing because of my circle of influence is changing. My circle is changing, so my image is changing. My style is changing. Why? Because I'm changing. My mind is changing. My heart is changing. My desires are changing. And even 
even though I might live away, I will never be the same. The days of living distracted lives and living in guilt and shame and running from Jezebel are over. You got to say that over your own life. We are free from the spirit of fear and we are going to set our lives in divine order by laying aside every way and every sin. Some of what holds you back though is not sin. It's waiting. Let me say it again. Some of what holds you back isn't sin. It's wait. And God told me to tell you, cut it out. Okay? Cut it out. Because you were never supposed to be carrying that in the first place. You was never supposed to be carrying that. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. And I declare we have the faith to cut loose what needs to be cut loose without the fear of backlash and repercussion. We are not going to lose one thing that we are supposed to have because of our righteous decision. God told me to release the grace to cut it loose and to cut it out. I'm talking to you. Cut it loose and cut it out. There are some people and some things that made it impossible for you to run. So God had to allow, listen to me, circumstances and situations to occur that would cause you to lose the dead weight. I don't know, I don't know Holy Spirit is speaking to you now. There's people and things and stuff popping up in your mind and you think that that's not who God's talking about and that's not what God's talking about. I'm here to tell you that is what God is talking about. And I release the grace for you to identify what's weight and what is sin. You have the grace to identify what is weight and what is sin and the strength to lay both aside. The strength to lay both aside. This is your season to run your race without distraction, without weight, and without sin. So throw your hands up as a prophetic gesture and as an indicator to God that it's above you now and it's out of your hands. And if Romans 8 and 28 is still true, you know what I said? And all things are really working together for your good, then I have to believe that whatever I lost was either weight or sin. And that it was and is unnecessary for what's in front of me. Say this with me. What's coming is better than what's been. Come on, say it out of your mouth. What's coming is better than what's been. And guess what? You have to believe that God has not done his best work in you. He has not done his best work for you yet. I have to believe that what's in front of me is better and greater than what's behind me. God's plan for my life, his plans are progressive and they are better in nature. I must believe that although it's hard for me right now and it was hard for me in the past, that my comeback is imminent. Say it, my comeback is imminent and I'll be back as a champion and God's going to give me double for my trouble. God's manifesting a miracle on my behalf. Listen, Psalms 23 says that my cup running over. He anointed my head with oil and my cup running over. Listen to me. The Psalm 23 blessing is upon me. You ought to say that the Psalm 23 blessing is upon me. And it is that my head is anointed with fresh oil. My cup is overflowing. And the people who stick with me and the people who don't abandon me and the people who don't people who hold me accountable and the people who are forward with me are going to experience the blessing of my overflow. Hear me and hear me good. The people who are with you and the people who are for you and the people who don't abandon you are going to experience the blessing of your overflow. So don't be afraid to cut it loose. You're not the only one that's been through
You got to read the Bible slow. Now how he going to say the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame. It's amazing that he put joy before the cross and the despising of the shame. And so that made me look at the scripture a little different because Jesus had to be reminded that although there's a cross at hand, you've got something to look forward to. Jesus had to look at the fact that they spit, they gonna spit on you, they gonna whip you, they gonna beat you, they gonna talk about you, they gonna shame you, but you've got to remember I've already set joy before you. I've already got joy waiting on you. I've already got peace waiting on you. I've already got a kingdom established that's waiting for you. All you got to do is trust me. You gotta do your part. Jesus showed us that there that there's a joy that set before before what he had to endure. Then I looked over Elder Strand at Psalms 35 and it said, For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. See, when you slow read the Bible, you'll see that he'll always have joy ahead of the day. He'll always have joy ahead of the shame.
and looking forward to what lies ahead. Verse 14 says, I press on. I press on. Press on. Press forward. Press upward. You have something to look forward to. Do what needs to be done. Because there's some joy that's set before you. That's waiting on you. Come on, say it. I have something to look forward to. That's the word of the Lord. We have something to look forward to. Come on, Chris. Ensuite, je t'invite à être membre de notre église 
et à l'adresse sur la toile www.thewornstrip.com. Alors, si c'est toi et tu veux bien nous joindre, fais-le ainsi et tu appuies le bouton connecter et nous serons ravis de faire votre connaissance. Et cela fait ainsi au nom de Jésus-Christ. Amen. Rejoice. Rejoice of joy. Regardless of the cross that you set before me, I thank God for joy. I have something to look forward to. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Well, did you enjoy worship today? No, I'm away. Did you actually enjoy worship today? We are so excited and we are just glad that uh, you were able to tune in with us today. We hope that you were refreshed by the worship and empowered by the word. And if you just came in a little late, hey, go ahead and still send your seat. You can do that on Cash App and Give a at the Worship Center, STL. And don't forget, hey, I know, Tia, we already kind of acknowledged it, but our pastor's birthday was yesterday, and we always know that the, that she is definitely worthy of double honor. So go ahead and hit her cash up too as Dallas Sign Maya White. And we just pray that you are blessed and that you were refreshed in the presence of God. And we cannot wait to see you right here, same time, same place, next week. We love you, family. We appreciate you. And we have something to look forward to. God bless you. Why? What's gonna happen?